President Zuma is the president of South Africa and uh, he must be off offered that uh, respect of a president because uh, any nation that uh, does not respect its own uh, leadership uh, runs a risk of uh, becoming an international uh, joke because uh, a president is uh, you know, a, a mirror and a vision uh, within which people see uh, who we are. And uh, I think the president uh, should be respected as long as he still occupies uh, that position. Uh, that does sound a little bit like a political response, personally, and in terms of what you've been going through in the last uh, few days. Would you like to see someone else uh, leading your country? I will never give a religious response because I'm a politician. I will always give a political uh, response. How I feel it matters not uh, because uh, what uh, um, um, is important is to put aside the feelings and uh, accept the uh, political conditions uh, and uh, interpret them and uh, uh, propose what could be uh, uh, solutions to current uh, you know, difficulties. Uh, I hold no personal grudges against President Zuma and uh, as to whether he is fit or whether he must come back, the structures of the NC will take that decision as we move forward. Well, shifting gears a little bit, you have uh, been a little critical about the South African government's foreign policy on a range of issues. Uh, what do you think has been the biggest foreign policy mistake made across the continent? Uh, by Look, the uh, we've raised concerns about uh, Libya. We've raised concerns about the uh, Ivory Coast. Uh, we are concerned about the government interventions in Swaziland. Uh, we are concerned about the little resources we've put in the Somalian crisis. And uh, we've raised the issue of uh, Botswana. Uh, which we said will engage uh, with the leadership of the African National Congress in all those issues because uh, we are of a view that uh, the colonizer wants to recolonize Africa. Uh, they are engaged in a scramble for resources in Africa and our land. And uh, we need a tough leadership which will not allow uh, recolonization of Africa. Now, Mr. Lema, Lema, I would say that was that comment is probably most uh, relevant to what's recently happened in Libya. There has been regime change. Gaddafi was indeed killed by NATO forces. What do you think uh, Zuma, the SA government, the African Union should have done better? How would you have liked to have seen that situation actually resolve itself? We have said uh, the solution to the Libyan crisis should be uh, provided by the Libyan people and that uh, there should not be any foreign interventions, especially through uh, military interventions which seek regime change because it undermines the right of the people of Libya to make their own determination. And to what degree did the African Union then let down the Libyan people? The African Union tried its own best and it was undermined by uh, the West and the Americans and the NATO forces. Uh, and uh, uh, we feel very disappointed that uh, under these uh, uh, you know, circumstances where we thought democracy was growing and uh, multilateral uh, engagements were becoming the order of the day, people can still undermine those types of processes. Now you mentioned uh, just a moment ago about your uh criticism in some ways of the uh, government in Botswana, in Khama's uh, rule. You did indeed apologize for suggesting regime change should happen. Was that because you were backed into a corner or have you changed your mind on that no, issue? No, no, no. We didn't uh, call for regime change. Uh, we spoke about uh, a strengthening the opposition in order to emerge. And uh, that became a big issue, which is one of the charges. And uh, we then uh, withdrew that statement publicly and then uh, agreed to engage with the leadership of the ANC. Internally, now, a now commitment indeed, was still uh, If indeed, ready as you say, pursue. you didn't call for regime change, you did apologize, you did discuss the issue, why do you think it's still been made such a, a big issue and is central, as you've said, 
uh, to no, your suspension? Uh, it's not uh, central. It's made a big issue deliberately to pursue certain things. It's not, it's not an issue. It's not, uh, it's not a big issue uh, that we think deserves the attention it, it is receiving. Uh, it's being used to pursue and achieve uh, certain hidden political agendas. Is it not part and parcel, though, of what uh, the ANC has said has brought the party into, into disrepute? Was those comments about Ian Khama's government? We don't agree with that. Okay, please yes. elaborate for us. No, we don't agree with that. In the, that's why we are appealing a, a guilt verdict on that matter, that the matter does not uh, bring the organization into disrepute. So you're and saying members of the ANC uh, then have jumped on this issue for other reasons entirely? other personal that's what political I'm saying. agendas. That's what we are saying. We said that in our statement today, and that's what we said in our argument in the disciplinary committee. Okay, now let's move over to Zimbabwe. Um, the government, uh, SA Sadak, has been trying to you know, mediate in the country, get some kind of political cohesion going on. ZANU-PF has been pretty clear recently that they're not happy with uh, South Africa's mediation efforts, Sadak's mediation efforts. Do you think that uh, ZANU-PF is being reasonable? Do you have, what's Look, your perspective um, on that? The Zimbabwean situation has been a matter that our government and SADC has been seized with. And uh, we hope that whatever the difficulties, they will find a solution. Um, ZANU-PF, it is within its own eyes to express itself how it feels with mediation. And for sure, they've got better reasons why they say the things they're saying. And uh, we hope that uh, uh, they will be able to find each other uh, with South Africa. <laughs>